Hello, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. Yesterday is uh, Wednesday, um, the 23rd of October 2024. Um, yeah, I, um, I made a video and I've had some reaction from people in South Africa and some ministers responded and let's listen because they're talking about the same thing that i've been saying to all of them that listen this whole thing we need a little bit more investigation you haven't touched the surface this poisoning of kids it is the higher up you should have formulated a team of experts and put them all together and go on an investigation it just cannot be that you pick up a few snacks that you assumed the kids would have and consumed and then you take them into your lab and test them up and then you come back there is no poison there's no traces and then you say yeah everything is okay that's not how it's done. We know that that's not how it's done. So Minister Aaron Mutulani, who is the Minister of Health, has issued a statement. Let's have a look at the statement. So just the statement, I'll just make it clear for you. Uh, just put it um, so you guys, you can read it. I'll put it here anyway. You can read it for yourself and you can pause the video and read the whole statement. Uh, I'll just summarize the key point. The key point is that they have a former team of experts to go on this investigation. They should have done this from last year. When the first kids were poisoned last year, this investigation should have started then. So obviously now they realize that everyone else is now concerned, including the experts. And uh, I've been putting, putting these uh, videos online and sharing it to some of them that i know they work in department of health and so they've responded obviously they i'm hoping that they've been listening to my video <laughs> telling them that they are not doing the right thing about this they're not going the right way investigating this uh, poison they have to leave any stone unturned as we say don't leave any stone unturned until you find the poison the source of the poison so i'm glad that they've responded and they've assimilated a team that will be looking for this poison anyway there's a couple of ministers that i've been out about one of them notably is the eff minister who's all you know uh, wearing this red uh you know i talk about him the other time when he was uh, being interviewed anyway he's we know that he's not competent but he is um he just they're just doing this thing to try to uh show south africans they're doing something but we know what they're doing now they are reacting they are reacting the knee-jerk reaction um so they know there's a, actually even a threat of lawsuit they say uh, they are have been i am so happy to see south africans that are not sitting there and just being passive there's been a, a huge even a, a they're threatening the government to uh, put the lawsuit a class action because the responsibility of protecting the public lies with the government the policy if there is no imp somebody, there was a failure in implementation of this policy that led to the fate to the, this death, the citizen can go after the government and it's within the constitution because that life is, is protected by the constitution of South Africa. If there is been a negligent, a form of negligent on their part, either for, not, for failing to act, um, they're seeing these poisons uh, where they shouldn't be. The archive that we t I talk about extensively, and I put a video of an expert, a toxicologist, who was talking about this as well. And I put a video yesterday about these uh, laws. Which law is it? it? You know, it's the Act 1972 of Foodstuff, Cosmetic and Disinfectant, and uh, of 1972. 
that that act it cut it is that medicine you know that chemical that poison it is protected under that it's classified under that act so if these inspectors they've been going to these shops and they've been seeing these chemicals and they've been questioning these people but they weren't actually reporting to the police they were breaking the law okay they weren't breaking if, if the police were there actually they weren't actually play, putting any filing any charges against these people they were also not um you know, defeating the, the justice so there's a lot of issues that involve with this poison so i am happy to see that dr aaron Mussolini, who i respect and uh, he was in the minister of home affairs before and he's the one that opened the worms a can of worms and showed south africans what was going on in home affairs the corruption and uh, the identity theft all of the stuff that was going on at home affairs he made everything he laid everything bare anyway about the, the failure of home affairs but anyway that is he belongs to the anc we all know that anc hasn't been governing um even to today i mean these uh kids have been buried i haven't seen a tweet or even a condolency from the president to actually express any grief or remorse to these parents yeah i haven't if you have seen one please uh, just uh send it to me and i will rectify it because i haven't seen one from the president of south africa so you ANC, you Ramaphosa is going to uh, dig you a long grave. You're going to be buried. Hopefully they bury you next to that because at least then you'll have some respect. That's all I can say to that. That Ramaphosa, that president you put in there, he is very incompetent president. He's the worst president that the Republic of South Africa has seen worse i mean the, the guy hasn't even created a single job since he's been in office but he still has a job he thinks he's king charles they might might as well be buddies with king charles he's not doing anything he is not doing anything to help south africans he is not nothing when they say in Afrikaans, Foko, that is that guy. He's doing Foko. <laughs> that is the president, Ramaphosa. He's a celebrity, a true celebrity president. He, you at the ANC, you deserve this. You know, you deserve this. After all of that you've done, you know, you were not meant to destroy South Africa. You were meant to make South Africa better. You were not meant to destroy it. Your role was to keep what was good and improve in community, in the black community, make everything better for the black community in South Africa, especially those in rural and remote and townships. You were meant to do that. You were meant to even safeguard their businesses. I mean spaza shops that is the role of the government the policy the government put in place government put the, the the policy put the law and policy so us the citizen can work around that law that is the government's policy is and also the government is also monitoring what how how are citizen using this how, how is this uh, policy being used or misused so if you see any problem with it then you start putting another changes to that legislation that is what it government's role is is to create rules the rules are of the game so we know that when we enter and play that game we have a rules that have been set up by the government and we have to work within those rules that is the role of government so what ANC has done has done nothing in fact, they put all this policy, these rules, but they weren't enforcing it. Even those ones that were there, the 1972 foodstuff law, it has been there for ages. All he had to do was to enforce this. You are not meant to even change it or do anything to it because it's good. 
you were meant to just enforce it. They failed to do that. And now they're reeling, reeling really hard. Let's listen to the ANC whip uh, talking about these issues because they know it uh, that their citizens are not going to forgive them for this. We're not going to forgive and forget what come to election about this death. Somebody is accountable for this death. And the idea that they all go out there, the environmental health, and do this testing of, of uh, product that they just pick up with no batch number, and then they test this product and come up and say, oh, no, there's no, we didn't find any traces of chemicals in that product. What product have you tested, dear? That Tawisha asked, what product did you test? How do you know that you were testing the same thing without any batch number? If there is no batch number and manufacturer's details, how do you know you were testing similar product, similar uh, manufacturing product that is manufactured by the same person on the same day under the same condition? How do you know if you don't have a, a batch number? If you can answer that, you just sniff it out, you just uh, pray and say, God, or, you know, worship and do all that stuff and say, yeah, I can see it there is clear. Well, how do you know? You've got nothing, you see? So you don't have any, if you don't have a batch number, you have to turn everything upside down. So that means everything is a suspect for that poison until you find the source of poison because you don't have anything to work around with. You see, that's why we, we have to comply to this GMP standard. It protect the public. These standards, if you ignore them, you, you it actually, it's reckless. You are dangerous, minister, if you ignore these standards. You, you, don't, you do not enforce certain standards. They are there to protect the public. They're not there for beauty of it and say, hello, look at me, I'm here, I'm a GMP, I'm great. They're there for the reason, you need to enforce it. So now I am happy that Dr. Aaron Mutuariri, who is the Minister of Health, has formulated a team of experts who will then go and turn the place upside down to find the source of this poison. I'm going to engage the high police because they must they must engage the police at the highest level. This one, this one has criminality in it. We know that it is a crime, but we need to actually work with all body in South Africa to make sure that you find the source. You should, this should have been done last year. By now, this, if this had been done last year, these six kids' lives would have been saved. These kids who died would have been saved. If last year, one child's death of a result of suspected poison was treated with seriousness, this wouldn't have happened. But this, they couldn't hide this one because this was six children. Five died within an hour of consuming this thing. In fact, within less than oh, half an hour, that father said half an hour. Uh, the other one, they were there, they were also survived, they were all died. We can all say that within an hour, they all died. Five children died within an hour of consuming the snack. And you go to the shops uh, the, where they bought the snack, you pick up a few things, a few um, products that similar resemble that, but do not have a batch number. You go to take it to the lab and you test it and you find no traces and you say, we could not find a gun of first fate poisoning cases closed. To which I say, you are incompetent. You need to go and find the source of this poison. You need to go and turn every corner, every upside down until that, you know, you need to, <laughs> you cannot sleep. If you don't sleep, you don't get to rest until you find the source of this poison. Okay? If you, and um, the message should be, do not eat these snacks. And I still say, stand correct, Ned. If you're South Africans, all of you, I know you watch my videos. Even the officials, some of them watch my videos. Thank you. I know you're listening. 
you need to tell South Africans to stop buying these products because you don't know where the source of the contamination. If you do any manufacturer, you know, like uh, you can, even if the, you do all the diligence and the best, they could be a little bit of unwanted, the high amount of certain unwanted uh, microbial. If they are found in any of the product, the whole batch cannot be released. They go back. So in this case, we don't even know which batch was it because there's no batch number. So that's why the, the easiest thing to protect children of South Africa and the public is to tell them not to consume this product until further notice. So the ANC whip, let's listen in to him and I will come back and discuss it further. We are going to intervene in a big way with regard to Spaza shops uh, issue. We are in charge. We are a government. Uh, where we are in charge, there must be laws that must be respected and that they must be enforced. Otherwise, if the state is weak uh, in terms of the rule of law, the masses will take the law in their hands. We need to work with the police using the laws of the country to ensure that uh, we deal with this challenge. It's a law enforcement part, the question of the spouses, on the other hand. But on the other hand, it's a bigger challenge of business, uh, them being supported on the ground. I come from Mutsabed, of my township. And uh, when I go there, I see majority of the spaza shops, small shops that were there, uh, have disappeared. And then uh, most of them are in the hands of foreigners. Uh, and then uh, these foreigners uh, are accused of selling uh, cheaper uh, goods to our people, but at the same time, some are poisonous. Uh, it's a problem. It's a problem because uh, uh, then it means where do they order this food that they sell to our people at a cheaper rate? The wholesale arrangement in the republic how is it manifesting itself so as a party as the ANC we must be at the helm of those struggles at the, head of, at the headquarters uh, I will be convening the cluster of ministers to give answers to this to work with our provinces we can't lament when we are in power and complain with the rest of society as government we must give leadership in relation to this matter and it's quite urgent and important. And we must not be ad hoc about it. You know, it must not be like the tap and the lip way. Uh, we open it when uh, there is a crisis and then we close it. When uh, the noise dies, we must be consistent in terms of regulating spaza shop uh, set up in our country. And uh, that must be durable. From the point of view of the ANC, we will mobilize society behind action that is taken by government. And that is what is important, and that's what we are going to do. And very soon, in the next coming weeks, we will announce not our plans, action plan for all South Africa townships must respond to this question of the spazas. It's very important. And that's what it means by ANC providing leadership to society. It means... We must lead around issues that affect our people, positive and negative. Mobilize the churches and everyone else around a common program of action for common good uh, of our nation. So we are going uh, to uh, ensure that we rally society behind actions uh, that in terms of the law regulated by government, but over and above that, action that ensures that those that are illegal we close them down simple as that and that's what is important yes. GNU, gnu can't be beginning in the end so figure 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 that was anc whip um you were in government for 30 years may i remind you you were in government for 30 years may i also remind you there has never been an incident like this 
ever ever never when these puzzle shops were owned by south africans there's never been any so you are meant to, to improve south africans life in what we call bee -E, black economic empowerment that was your policy that was meant to benefit those community isn't that right so what happened so where did everything went wrong figile you said it rightly that in your community none of the south africans are owning these shops so where did everything went wrong you are in government you set the rules so you see you see why you are at 40 percent and you see why anc will be buried next in the next election there is no going back there is no one is going to keep voting for this nonsense you are acting like emergency like an ambulance you're constantly acting like an ambulance like you're in emergency reactive that's what you do that's not governance you don't you're not consistent and you develop this crony be policy that i think needs to be scrapped because it was meant to help those community in the township but where's the money where's the development how come you let the businesses that were owned 100 percent by black community in those marginalized areas that you have bought these illegals into that community and they've sold these cheap goods that are killing their kids under your watch i would like to know if you are in charge you said it you are in charge how come how come the government responsibility is to protect businesses to make finance available to for small and medium business so they can thrive and employ south africans that's why unemployment is so high in south africa these illegal migrants they don't hire south africans we know they don't you go to your shops they don't those even uh, those who are not Ill illegal those who are legal they don't they hire these illegals that's why they call them that's why you have a uh, trucks and load and loads of them coming to south africa and be pat and sleeping in the shops because they are used as slave even some south africans are using the same method but you are in government and you said you are in charge yep that's why next year not next year 2026 you're going to decline prepare for burial Start, take, start taking an insurance policy. Start thinking about it. Because your death is imminent. Pretty much imminent. And like I said, DA is, going, is not going to benefit from it. Because they, were, they are there with you. With this reckless migration policy that has threaten the life and the businesses of south africans and it puts south african unemployed that is stupid policies and you know it it is crap you still have zpee -E epp stuff that's there you need to scrap it you need to scrap it at least maybe south africans may forgive you maybe you might slightly put you on the last support and be saved in the next election but so far all of this stuff you're saying that you're talking about they're all reactive 
constantly like you are in in emergent in a state of emergency yeah that's not how you govern that's that's a, that's why i say pan african is crap people were buying into this pan africanist they need to be examined i hope south africa I, I think south african is smart anyway that's why they have they haven't followed and voted overwhelming for these left-wing pan-africanists um like i said the center rise has been elusive but i think gate and mckenzie patriotic alliance and actionists say they're likely to to move to the center i see them as center right but i uh, yet to see some more policies you know policy is what will tell me if they are the center the devil is in the detail you all you guys should be ashamed of your behavior there and see the reason why these kids are dead is because of you porous migration policy you haven't put money into the border management you haven't digitalized home affairs made it easier for corruption to thrive within there just like you did with the health um health department of health this year where was the money for the doctors who were unemployed for to train them yeah what happened to it you see see yeah got you you're not really governing are you you think you're celebrities guys well 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 we'll see 2026 come south african local election because local election is very important south africans you must register to vote you must make sure that the people who are going to represent you i have they are they are of sound mind they are able to put your interests first just like gate and mckenzie is you need someone like that who can represent you put south africa first not all this ngo not all, all this uh stuff that you, you know crap that's going on there you will be a priori priority you shall be a priority and i also would like to see a legislation that is going to cut on these um political um you know people who are giving money to politicians political party i would like to see a reform around them because i see there's a lot of money of uh, some groups that are paying for some of you political parties to say certain things because you've been brought up by them so i want to see a legislation that cut and cap on political donations yep i want to see that as well so we protect the democracy of south africa well, see all of you engaging and sitting around with all of these groups that we don't know where they came from where they've been all this time but you know what i'm not going to say more about that but you need to deal with this mess of this now the toxicology report has come out for you all about those uh, six children that died last week i don't know not more than a week now it's about 10 days more than 10 days ago and they found it's expected they find no traces of any chemicals that is the environmental health the snacks the toxicology still uh, we're still waiting for toxicology the medical examiner so this one is uh the environmental health uh that's done by that guy with the red eff and crap you know that one yeah that he kind of those people that do these uh, tests anyway like i told you that they're likely not going to find anything you know in there because they they're not sure they're looking for the same thing they don't have the product don't have patch number if you don't have a patch number what are you looking for we're going to look anyway so they took all these uh, snacks uh, they thought where they source and took them to the lab and then the result have come out to say no 
traces of any chemicals, just like the other kits. They did the same thing with the last year's kits and the same thing this year because somebody is protecting themselves here. But which I said, like I said earlier, they haven't touched, they haven't scratched the surface. They haven't scratched the surface. You just want, they haven't done anything whatsoever. They haven't done anything. So more kids are going to be poisoned. More kids are going to go to hospital because they haven't finished. They haven't even scratched the surface. They, have, they don't even know the manufacturer of these products. They haven't gone there and turned that place upside down to look for this chemical. They have not. Because they haven't gone and, and turned the place upside down, and they haven't also told the public to stop buying this product and ban the sale. So who does that? Who has the authority to ban the sales of product? It's the consumer protection. Where are they? If people are being poisoned, eating these snacks that you know, they're the source of this, and you haven't found any poison, why do you still have these on, being sold? at a school yeah. see see how what's the difference here competency and incompetence and and just spinning things around it is so obvious now everyone can see it you guys are incompetent but you know 2026 we're going to have a funeral of all of you we're gonna bury you all in the pool and thank you guys for listening have a lovely night bye for now